Imagine this with me. One group of the enemy's soldiers have settled into their watch post. The group that just finished their watch are heading back into the camp, getting settled in, and one group is sleeping. What do you think happens next? Welcome to Life Words Day by Day. We are studying Judges chapter 7 today, where an underarmed army led by Gideon is getting ready to attack a much greater army. Gideon divides his army of 300 men into three groups, 100 men each, and they sneak into enemy territory and they surround the enemy. And they do this in the middle of the night at a certain time, the beginning of the middle watch. So here's how this plays out. There were usually three watches throughout the night. While one group watched, two groups slept. But at this very moment, one group was walking out to their post, one group was walking back from their post, and one group was sleeping. And then all of a sudden, Gideon gives the signal, and 300 ram's horns blow. And then the clay pots smash together, and the men shout, giving the impression that there were far more soldiers out there than there really were. The enemy camp turns to chaos as the group that was sleeping is awakened and they run out to fight. But who do they run into in the middle of the night? They run into their own men returning from their watch and the bloodbath is on with Midianite soldiers killing their own soldiers. God using the apparent strength of the enemy against itself. The military might and superiority is turned on its head and the enemy is defeated. Well, this wouldn't be the last time a perceived strength was turned on its head. The religious leaders of Jerusalem, with all of their strong influential power, persuaded the masses to call for the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. I'm sure that the devil thought he had won a great victory that day. But Jesus says, unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it cannot bloom in strength. So even though it appeared that the strength of legalism had won and the weakness of the Lord lost, nothing could be further from the truth. His death and resurrection overcomes the strongest, most unrelenting force in all the earth, death. And He brings it to its knees. And He can do the same in your life. Our world will tell you to strive for self-independence because that can be your greatest strength. In reality, it's your fastest step towards fatality. Complete dependence upon Christ is your greatest strength. When you are weak, He is strong. When you pray today, please remember John Page and his family, our missionaries in Cambodia. Also, remember the Armenian Life Word broadcast that's heard in Armenia.